2016, a mother would receive a call that her son had been shot. Moments later, while at the scene, detectives would come and tell her that her son's shooting was fatal, a moment that would change your mother's life forever. Quentin Bernard Williams was gunned down July 24, 2016, by 15-year-old gang member, Mr. Carlson. Today, we will have Ms. Williams with us to tell us how she feels about the shooting and how it changed her life forever. Welcome to Real Talk with CC. Stay tuned as we go to this Met commercial and we'll be right back. with CC. If you're just tuning in, we're here today with Miss Sandra Williams, whose son was fatally killed on July 24th, 2016. We're here to get her views on how this incident totally changed her life forever. Thank you for joining us, Miss Williams. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little about your son, Quentin. Well, first of all, I have 11. I still say 11. Okay. And uh, Quentin was the funny one, Mary Rachel one, and I loved him to death. Um, he was smart. Um, didn't get in trouble. He had three kids, loved his kids. And how old, is his, how old is his children? <laughs> Little. <laughs> he's small. Okay. I'm going to say five, three, and two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he had babies. Babies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How was you and your son's relationship? It was lovely. I mean, it was like we were best friends, but I was a parent. Okay. But it was like we was best friends. Okay. And um, he, you know, he talked to him about any and everything. And he didn't give me no problem. He was a little bad. And um, he would listen. But he didn't never get in trouble. And I tried to tell him and talk to him. And he was like, I know, I know. You know. So, the day you received the call that your son had been shot, and that's all they told you at the time, mm -hmm. what went through your mind? The niggas in the leg or the arm, uh, it ain't true. Uh, I was getting ready to lay down on my pillow. My head never hit the pillow. Now, you went to the scene, and um, I understand that you were some distance from the scene. But you could still see something I could in the see street. Nothing. I never looked that way. Oh, you never looked that way? I never looked. I couldn't even tell nobody what it looked like down there. Mm -hmm. I never looked that way. Was it because she was frightened to, of what you might see? I didn't want it to be true. Okay. So, you and your family are all sitting around, standing around, waiting to hear what happened and waiting for a detective to come talk to you. When they finally did, what did they say? Well, I got a call about 2 o'clock that morning, and uh, it was... Detective Strickland, and he said, he has your son's mother. And I, I 
had to look different than I did when I got to the scene. Because I was happy. You know, it didn't even take 24 hours. Some people don't know who done killed their kids. Some people don't know, you know, and some people feel like they're doing the same thing. And, um, I know that was a horrible moment for you, um, but okay, you go to the scene, and at this time you don't know that your son, that the shooting was fatal. But you still have hopes that it was just a little simple shooting, um, although no shooting is simple. But mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying. But um, when they finally come and tell you that the shooting was fatal. I mean, what, what went through your mind? It's really indescribable. It's indescribable. I can't describe it. So at this time, they had not apprehended the, the killer. How long did it take for them to find the... Um, the youth. It, it was a youth that killed him. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I got there a little after 7. I left at 7 o'clock that evening. And um, they called me 2 o'clock that morning. It was less than 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to find out that your son's murderer was a 15 year old child basically I mean when, when you when you found out that someone had killed him did you know the age of the child not at the time so I'm assuming at this time you were angry uh, for whoever shot him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how did you feel when you found out that it was only a child I couldn't too much be mad with him I couldn't. I mean, <clears throat> some kids, they they looking for something. I don't know what they're looking for, but they're, it's like they're looking for something other than what they're getting at home. Maybe acceptance. Yeah. Mm. And um, just like us, if I got a 12-year-old daughter and she's acting out or whatever, I'm responsible. The adult is responsible for the child. And I blame the adults. I talked with you previous about this incident, and I remember you saying that um, you you kind of felt sorry for the child because basically they're both he's just a child, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, that's that's what he is. Mm -hmm. And and I hear you saying that you blame the adult. So do you think somewhere along the way that? The parents of this child failed him, and and with and really, that's with that's with all our kids that are that are out there joining gangs and stuff. Do you think that we failed them somewhere? I don't really think so, because some parents do all they can do. All they can do. Some kids come from the best homes, you know, and they have no reason to be out there doing these kind of things. What would you like, if you had the opportunity to talk to this young man, what would you say to him? <clears throat> Have you ever thought about? I wouldn't even know the first thing to say to him. I, I wouldn't. Because I don't know if I'd be mad what I do, you know, or I, I don't know. So that was going to be my next question. Are you bitter about at this young man? Are you angry? Even though he is a child, there's still got to be some kind of... I'm, you know. I'm, 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 I don't know what kind of mad it is. I'm mad, but not the... I guess not the angry man. I'm mad though. Because of the senseless act. Right. It, it ain't that I'm mad at him heartless, but it, it's just I'm, I'm just mad. 
it's like at these times we we want somebody to blame but then when you're looking at it like this is just a child so now who do i blame you just want to be mad yeah. you know <laughs> I, I understand. wish i could just whoop him oh, okay like I did mine. <laughs> okay <laughs> you know it's just whoop him you know now now you went to to court when they um after they apprehended him and you went to court which was a speedy <clears throat> trial mm -hmm. um and as you look at this young man did you see remorse in him no he looked like he ain't did nothing he looked like oh. you know this something he did and he just gone but he don't look like he did nothing so do you think this crime was to boost his rank in the in the game well from what i've heard um he has a terrible record as far as that's not the first incident that he done committed and prior to him killing quint he had just been out of the juvenile system a week like a week or two before Okay, um, we're not going to get into his mm -hmm. actions, but that, have your son ever been in, in trouble with the law? Never. Never? Never. Wow. He never. And, and, and when that happened to him, and the, the, the detectives and the police and stuff, they were like, he was just born. Huh. They never knew anything about him. Okay. Until he died. So let me ask you this. Was he a part of a gang? Yes. Okay. Um, I remember one day he came home and he had like a little bruise. And I'm like, who done jumped on you? I'm thinking somebody done did something to him and stuff. Oh, I was playing basketball. What kind of basketball are you playing? But not knowing I'm not, you know, I'm, you know. And never once was spoke of nothing about no gang or nothing again. I already knew because I know ain't nobody playing football and, and come back like that. I mean, basketball and come back looking like that. So from what I understand uh, with the games that you have to, um, as one officer told me, blood in, blood out. Mm -hmm. So they have to beat you into the game. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just... I find that strange, though, that you want to get beat up just to be a part of something. But what yeah. I've but I, what I've learned from that, it ain't really that they're really just beating them up because they really, really gonna have like if your brother or your real biological brothers or sisters or whatever, whoever is in the game, see most likely they're gonna be the one to. Yeah. So basically, they somebody. just want to see how tough you are if you if you equipped for the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna go to a commercial. Don't leave. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning back in with us. We also have with us um, Coach Ricky Edmondson. Ricky Edmondson who was a father figure to Quentin Williams. And we're gonna um, ask him a few questions concerning Quentin. Mr. Edmondson, what was your relationship with Quentin Williams? Um, he played semi-pro football, team uh, football with, with the West Georgia Eagles. And uh, he was employed with my company. Uh, I have an appliance repair company I've been had for 22 years, and and uh, he just expressed interest in it, and said that he wanted to learn what I did. So I gradually started him part time, and it became a full time job because he actually it surprised me because huh. I've had quite a few young men that wanted to learn what I do, but. Once they found out that they had to put some work into yeah. it, they kind of gave up. And uh, he just basically stuck with me 24-7. Okay. 
uh, other than me dropping him off at home in the evening time. He was with me everywhere, all day, every day. And when he wasn't working, he was with me. So, regardless of the fact that he was in a game, he showed interest in taking responsibility for his life. Yes. Okay, now, um, when you found out that Quentin was in the game, what did you tell him? Basically, it came to my attention. I did not know he tried to conceal it as much as he could. Okay. And one day he came to me and he just wasn't his old self. And he uh, asked me a question. Uh, he said that he was scared he wanted to ask me something. He wanted to tell me something. He was scared how I was going to react to it. Because uh, on the football team that I have, I have a no, you can't be affiliated with any game. Okay. And he knows how I feel about the gang activity in our city. And anything negative that bring the community down. So... He kind of sidestepped me for a few days, and I finally cornered it and asked him, you know, you hadn't been been yourself, you know, joking. So he finally sat down with me and told me uh, what his issues were, and I gave him the opportunity to talk to me and open up to me without any kind of retribution toward him and he expressed that it was a pressure thing and an excitement thing that lured him in mm -hmm. and that wasn't him anymore he didn't want to continue doing it so it seems like um you had a great influence on him. I sure hope so. And you showed him a better <laughs> way. Um, and I basically think that that's what most of these kids are looking for. They're looking for acceptance and looking for a way out. And we're not actually hearing them. Yeah. Okay. So... From what I understand from the mother, he wanted out of the game now. Yes. So, did you give him any um, suggestions on getting out of the game or actually ultimatums, uh, maybe? Actually, I gave him a choice. Uh, I told him that there's a fork in the road. He was at the fork. You can either go left or you can go right. And if you continue doing what you're doing, you're either going to be incarcerated or dead. Mm -hmm. Or you can come work for me and I can give you your own truck, give you opportunity in the company, and you can have what you want in life and basically I never forget it okay. uh, it was on a Sunday we usually don't work on a Sunday unless it's, unless it's an emergency and he called me and he said coach I need to talk to you and I said okay so uh, I went to pick him up and we got to my house. I said, what do you want to talk to me about? And he had a big smile on his face. Gigantic smile. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm free. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, I'm free. I got permission. They let me go. 
because they understood, they they knew that you were trying to do something positive. So from from my from my understanding, he was no longer with them. This was three weeks prior to him being killed. So he thought that they had actually let him out of the game. No strings attached. And he was free. So was this the same game that he was affiliated with? Was this young man a part of the game that did the fatal shooting? Well, I, I don't know the structure of it because I, I try to stay distance from it and everything, but from what I understand that I don't know the different sets or anything like that or whatever uh, what they consist of, but from what I understand that uh, he did know the guy that, that shot him. Now, whether they were part of the same gang if I had to, if I had to guess from what the information that I'm getting, it was it's, there's different different sets of one game. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, so do you think? And this is just an opinion, or have you been told why he was killed? You have. So, do you think, in your opinion, that maybe it was because they really didn't let him out, and that was, um, as the saying goes, "blood in, blood out." You get beat in, but you have to die out. Well, actually, uh, due to this still being on going investigation. Uh, I can't touch on it a little bit without getting into it and everything, but it has been, he was no longer part of the game. Uh, and that's a true fact. Okay. And I understand, I understand that. And I, I understand from his mother as well that he, he wanted out of the game. Um, I guess what I'm asking is, do you feel like they told him that he could get out, but it was really all intention at the beginning that there would be one way out for him. I've heard, I, uh, and and I'm and I'm I'm just uh, I'm asking because from what I learned from one of the detectives that especially with the Bloods, that's how they got their name. Blood in, blood out, yeah. you know, and I, I was thinking that maybe they beat him in. I know that they beat him in and that they will beat him out. But from talking to gang members, um, I understand that there is only one way out, and that is death. So I, I don't believe it. I have been told in rare. I mean, in certain instances, if you are, if you get permission, they have ranks. You have to get permission, and that person has to take it, and that person has to take it to the person, and they have to think about it and what you mean to the organization. And then if the person that's up feels like that, okay, he's okay. Uh, that there are instances that people are allowed to walk away from this. So do you, so do you think it because it's based on information that they may know? Uh, at what level of information? Because at certain ranks, you they you know more. You're around the uh, lead leader more, and you got more information. But those who are at say basically ground level, they can easily get out. Well, I, I wouldn't say easily get out, but uh, 
I'm just learning about this. Yeah, uh, I understand. Basically, this is a, from the information that, that the detectives have given me and, and everything. That basically, I'm, and that's the conversation that me and him had. And uh, from shortly thereafter, after he had got killed, uh, I learned that that was the truth, that he was let out and he was not to be touched. Well, I think it just, <clears throat> I think it just, though. Um, the ones that, the gang members, I think it just, sometimes, I think they take up moms themselves to just do stuff. Okay. You know. So you think that this was this young man's own doing? Because of the it? way. I, I'm, I, I, I'm going to say this without, without going too far into mm -hmm. the investigation, and this has been actual, actually public information that, um, there were calls made before the shooting. There were calls made to, I won't say who, uh, but um, top gang leaders as to what they wanted them to do as far as just beat him up, shoot him, or kill him. So, do you think, uh, from the information that has been out, that he was marked? Yes. And it wasn't your son. Mm -hmm. He was marked. And, and what I say about that is he, they were told to kill him. Mm. I mean, this is just your opinion. It's not from what you're saying that happened. Mm -hmm. It's just, is that the way you feel or... I feel like, like I said once, I don't know nothing about the rank, this and that, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, by dealing with what I'm dealing with. If, if, if he was not to be touched, or if he knew the person that said, you know, a member, and I know they got somebody to answer to or whatever, and uh, I think it's just something that they want to do. Okay. I do. I think it's just something they want to do. And I'm not saying that they. I, I don't really feel like that. Some of some of them, not all of them, because I don't know. You know, but I don't think. Um, I mean, because if you don't know somebody, you know what I'm saying. You don't know somebody. And as I'm saying in, in today, most of these, most of the gang members and most of the sh fatal shootings, most of them were done by kids who have grown up together, even family members. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just, I'm confused about their loyalty to whoever is at the top mm -hmm. as opposed to family and childhood friends. Mm -hmm. But then, I'm with you. I don't understand it. I don't understand mm -hmm. the gang affiliation. But I guess everything changes once you find that acceptance that you, yes, that you really want mm -hmm. and that you really feel is genuine. Mm -hmm. When it's really not. No. Because mm -hmm. they are destroying these kids' lives mm -hmm. and. If you're concerned, genuinely concerned about someone, I don't see how you can put their lives at risk or put them at risk to kill somebody. Exactly. But anyway, I want you to speak to the parents. Um, and I would like for you to say something, uh, give a comforting message, message to them. And we'll do that right after this commercial. <music> To Real Talk with CC. We were speaking to Miss Williams about the death of her son, Quentin Williams, who was fatally wounded 
on July 24, 2016, by a 15-year-old gang member. Ms. Williams, I would like for you to look into the camera and tell, uh, talk to the mothers, talk to the gang members, and let them know how this has affected your life. This is this goes out to all the parents that have lost a child due to gang activities. Um, it goes out to the gang activators. You you no longer hurt the dead of the ones that's put away. You affect the whole family, the community. Um, to the parents, you have to talk to your children. You have to search your children. You have to you have to be there for your children. Because when they're gone, they're gone. There's no coming back. It's not a good feeling. Something needs to be dead. Some people's lives change forever. You never get your life back. You have to try. Mm. It's horrible. It's horrible feeling. Horrible. But as a parent, you have to learn to be there. You can't step away. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Now we will have a word from the coach. Um, encourage your words as to him being a mentor and a father figure for some of these kids that are in the streets, lost, without any hope, and without any love and acceptance. Coach, will you give us a word to some of the youth that may want to make a change in their life for the better. My word to some of the young gentlemen that are contemplating joining some of these organizations. If it doesn't seem right, usually it's not right. It's not going to get any better. If you're missing something, talk to somebody. There's too many young men that's going down the road of destruction to the point that you're either going to get killed or you're going to get incarcerated. To the community, we need to go back to raising our kids rallying around our community and making sure that they're taken care of. If you see something, don't turn your head. Correct it. Because that might be the difference between somebody going left or right. To the community leaders, it's more than past time for y'all to step up. Just because it's not affecting you today doesn't mean it's not going to affect you tomorrow. Just because you move from the hood doesn't mean the hood can't reach out to you. So if you're a community leader and you're standing up or representing a certain area, that this is affecting. It's time to step up and make a change. Because a lot of times you can do things, you can get things done that somebody else can't get done. Young men, it's time to voice your word 
and stand up and stop being followers and be leaders. You can follow anybody to destruction, but take back your own destiny and become something positive. We want to thank you for joining us today. I would just like to say that regardless of what these children are doing out here, they're still children and they're still reachable. There are so many men out there who have kids, some who don't have kids, that can be stand up and be father figures to these children. Don't let them continue to be lost. We can do something about all this killing, all these gang affiliations. Let's step up to the plate and do what needs to be done. And that is real talk.